Hi, so this is a short video to talk about output impedance on op amps. In order to find what the open loop output impedance is of the amplifier, we have to look within the amplifier itself. And the way we can do that is by looking at the data sheet. If we look here, this is the uh, inside of the amplifier. And you can see on the output here, we've got 128 ohm resistor and a 64 ohm resistor here. So uh, 192 ohms basically would be the what we class as the open loop output impedance. Obviously there's a push-pull arrangement, so we've got 192 that way, 192 that way. Now with a, an operational amplifier, the output impedance will uh, reduce as we increase the feedback gain, if you like, the closed loop gain of the amplifier. So if you were to create an amplifier with a gain of two or three or four, then that output impedance uh, would reduce by that same factor. So What's important is the, what's possible in terms of maximum output swing based on the load that's attached. And again, if you uh, if you open up the, the data sheet for the TL072, uh, you'll see a plot like this, which is maximum peak output voltage versus load resistance. So you determine what load resistance is going to attach to the, the amplifier itself. And this tells you what the max peak to peak uh, loading will be. And this really corresponds to the maximum current that the uh, device uh, can source and sync. In this case, for a TLO72, it's about 25, 26 milliamps, there or thereabouts. So if we take uh, this example here, just have an amplitude of uh, 1 volt and a load resistor of uh, 1K. If we run this simulation, take a look at the input, that's our 1 volt peak to peak. And we see we have 1 volt on the output. And we know that's possible because with a 1K a load resistor, we can achieve up to, uh, ooh, what's that about, maybe 11 volts uh, peak to peak. So if we uh, keep this one volt going in, but we reduce this load resistor down, if say we take it down to 200, run the simulation again, we'll see we can still achieve uh, one volt with 200 ohms. And that's uh, as you'd expect, because we've got 200 ohms there and we can achieve approximately six volt um, swing. So if we start taking it down even further, let's take it down to say 20 now. And now we can see, whoops, um, that we've got sort of some, some clipping going on. Um, that's our output. And if we look at the current, we can see that the current through this resistor um, gets limited at around 25, 26 milliamps, which fixes the uh, voltage that's possible across that particular resistor. We've gone outside really of these, uh, this exponential curve here, and we were very much limiting the amount of peak to peak swing we can achieve. We're effectively overloading the uh, output of the op amp. So we'll get the same effect if we change this voltage. Let's now make it a 10 volt input. We'll run the simulation again. That's our input 10 volt swing. And that's our output voltage. We can see, sorry, output voltage there, which again is, is clipped. It's clipped at a higher voltage level. But if we look at the current, the current is still limited by that same amount. Um, so what we can do obviously then is if we're feeding it with 10 volts, if we look at this chart, it should be capable of 10 volts at easily at driving a 1K load. So just take that back to 1K, let's run the emulation, it's the input. That's the output voltage, so we can achieve 10 volts peak to peak. And the output current drive is uh, 10 milliamps in that case. So uh, open loop output impedance very much depends on this value here, and this value will vary depending on which op amp you choose. Um, but you can see, we're pretty much safe to say that as we start to increase uh, any gains through either negative feedback using either uh, non-inverting or inverting format this impedance will certainly uh, drop lower and lower i think if you read the data sheet provided that whatever your op amp is feeding is you know within the specification then you should be certainly within design limits